Hi everyone, Kirk here with Kirk's Motor Rod Shop in Crystal Lake, Illinois, bringing you a do-it-yourself video. This is going to be on the K1600B, or bagger, also replies to really just about any K1600 that's out there, whether it's the GTL, the GT, Grand America, uh, any of that line. So this video is going to encompass really three things. It's going to be changing out the lubricant in the final drive. It's going to be flushing the brakes as well as changing the oil. And uh, this is all just part of a, a normal service that you would do hopefully every year minimum. Uh, but depending on how much you ride, maybe you have to do it more than once a year. Um, one of the things that I would recommend doing is every time you change your oil, change out your final drive lubricant. Uh, you can you know, worry about the brakes. Uh, I would do that every year, no matter what. Uh, so whether you do it in the fall, the spring, it doesn't matter. Just as long as you get that stuff changed out. Because what I am seeing on a lot of these late model bikes is there's like some water intrusion that's happening in the uh, reservoir, in the upper reservoir. Don't really see it too much in the rear, but I do see it there as well. And what it manifests as is kind of like a yellow looking froth. It looks um, like a foam of, of some kind. Uh, it looks looks like lemon meringue or something in there, or lemon juice. Sometimes the whole a body of the brake fluid turns into a, like a yellow liquid, very yellow. And, and and that's really just water contamination in there, and you need to get that out and, and keep it flushed. So I would uh, recommend, you, you know, if you got one of these bikes, go out and take a look at it. Make sure you don't have any kind of yellow foam down in there. Open it up, you know, have a look. Anyway. I have no idea what is on this bike. This is a, almost a brand new bike. I think it only has like 18,000 miles on it. And what I'm going to be doing is just some of the routine services. So let's get at it. Oh, by the way, if you, if you do uh, want to support the work that I'm doing, there's some links right down below on how to do that. One of the things down there is the Amazon page. And on that page, you'll find uh, oil filters as well as the oil cup wrench that I use on this bike to change out the oil filter. So... If you want to get them somewhere else, well, that's up to you. But thanks so much for watching this one. Let's get going on this. First thing I'm going to do here is remove the rear tire. And I'll go through everything as I go along. So you want to make sure that your, your bike is in gear. And then take a, I think it's a T45. You can kind of get a T47 in there. Uh, but it really... It, it doesn't really go in there very well and if a t45 is just a little loose I don't even know if they make a t46 that would probably be the perfect size but these aren't these aren't in there so tight that you can't get them out so loosen them up Now you're going to put it into neutral so you can rotate the rotor around to get to the fill port. And oh, it is pretty much, pretty close to being in the right spot. That's the same T45. And make sure you loosen up your fill port first. So we're going to I'm going to go ahead and just pull it out of there. But you want to loosen up the fill port first because if you do have a problem with getting the fill port out, you don't want to have drained out the lubricant back here and then wind up getting into a pickle with with that. And there's that. I just set, set that down. So now the fill port's opened up. Now I can drain it out. I'm really glad that BMW changed their, their fill port on here. I mean their drain port used to be the uh, drain and fill were in the same thing and you'd have to remove the the final drive or let the final drive swing down out of the way but thankfully they uh they changed that so now it's really just it's kind of an all-in-one way way better same size again go this looks 
it's very clean. So you're going to clean out the magnet that's down inside here. I like to take a Q-tip and run it around in there and get all as much of the the material that's in there. Obviously, you're going to look for any chunks or anything. There's there's nothing at all on there. This this looks remarkably clean coming out of there. And see, there's a little bit of stuff in there, but nothing much. Once it's done draining, put this thing back in. This is going to get torqued down to 20 newton meters. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and just refill it. So this is going to get refilled with the uh, gear lube and it's going to be 180 milliliters. So what I have is a syringe. It's made by Mighty Vac. I think you can find these on my Amazon page. Very, very handy to have this. It's very difficult to get this in without some kind of a syringe. And I made a little mark here just on my, this is the one that I use for gear lube. Um, I made a little mark here just to help me out because I do enough of these. So for gear lube, I'm using a Severe Gear 75110. If you got a different flavor that you like, go with whatever you like. Let's go slow. Sometimes if you go a little bit too fast, it may want to come jumping out of there again and then wind up on, on brakes. So while the tire is off, it's also a very good time to check your brakes to make sure that your pads are in good shape. If they're not, then by all means go and change those out. There it is. Take this thing apart. Just inspect your O-rings. You can reuse them. And now this one's going to get torqued to the same 20 Newton meters. All right, next you can put the tire on and these studs will get torqued to 60 Newton meters. That's six zero. I'm not gonna do that in the video right now because I'm gonna be checking the brakes and uh, also doing a brake flush. Now on to the oil change. So probably a lot of you have already seen the, uh, the video I did on this, but the, just kind of a repeat. It's going to be the same type of thing. So we have an M8 bolt here, and then there's an M5 bolt underneath the M8 bolt. And uh, why they did this? It's because, well, it's BMW. That's all I know. So we're going to move the M8 on here. And you'll see uh, quite a bit of oil will come out, but it's not all of it. Now I would really recommend, you know, it, it's always a good idea to, to change this when it's hot, but warm is better and cold is okay. Uh, cold, you're not gonna, you're not gonna burn the heck out of your hands when this oil comes roaring out of here. Not this part, because I didn't get any oil on myself there. But the next part, if this oil's hot, Believe me, you will burn yourself terrible. It just hurts like hell. So just be careful. All right, I'm gonna clean the magnet off. It's just off camera, but I'm cleaning the magnet off of any material. And it's a good idea to change out the O-ring. Uh, if you do use a torque wrench and you tighten this down correctly, you can get several uses out of this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just put a brand new one on. There it is right there. Because I have them. And that's what I do for customers. So next we have up inside here, this is a five millimeter hex. You have to fish around in there and you'll feel it pop. And then go ahead and remove this part. So one of the things that I've, I've discovered over doing many of these now is that it's a good idea to just, you roll this thing out and you just hold it in there. You don't try to remove this, this plug. I mean, if it falls out, then obviously you can deal with it, but what I do is I just, I go ahead and get the thing loosened up, and I just let it pour over my hand. Now, if the oil is screaming hot, this is where this would become very, very, very painful, and I would suggest having um, maybe a, a pair of pliers or something, a needle nose pliers or something to hold on to this while this part of it is draining out. And once this is done draining out, then go ahead and just 
roll this thing back in. That way I don't risk dropping it inside there. I don't, you know, have to carefully pull the thing down. Not a big deal. All right. Roll that back in there. Now I'm going to get my torque wrench and I'm going to torque that down to 12 Newton meters. This is definitely an area where you want to have a torque wrench because if you torque it down too tight, it's going to be absolutely miserable for the next time you take it out or for the next guy that has to take it out of there. I'll put the pan plug back in. And this one gets torqued to 28 Newton meters. That's that part. Now we'll do the filter. All right, oil filter time. So here's the oil filter right here. And how you get to it is just by pushing down on the linkage and then you can get your cap wrench, which you can get on my Amazon page. They're very inexpensive, but very necessary. Uh, make sure you get the right one. This one has uh, flutes on it. It's got little flutes instead of just lands. And you'll see up in the comments on my Amazon page that, you know, it fits a K1600. Uh, just make sure you get the right one. It just makes the job a lot easier. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just put a piece of material right here to kind of protect the exhaust so I don't have to clean up too much of a mess. I probably will still have to clean some up. In this case, I'm just going to use a piece of cardboard that I've used a hundred times. If you do make a mess on your exhaust, a little brake cleaner will clean that right up. Or it'll just burn off when you start driving. So the filter I'm using today is a high flow HF164. That's the correct one. Just put a little bit of oil on the uh, on the O-ring that's on there. And then we're going to torque this down to 11 Newton meters. Just double check it. Good. That's that. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to clean this up and then put some uh, some new oil in it. Yeah, almost got nothing on there. Almost nothing. All right, over on this side of the bike, you got the dipstick, and we're gonna pour the oil in there. This takes four and a half liters of oil. So whatever that converts to to gallons or to uh, quarts, I mean. I've got, uh, so what I did was I, I took this jar and I, this is full all the way up, so it's this is four and a half liters. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pour in approximately three and a half liters and then I'm going to start the bike up and when uh, the bike is, is running it will suck the oil off of the top here and put some down in below and then I'll have room to pour in the extra liter of oil. You want to make sure that you use motorcycle oil. This is 540 motorcycle oil. You don't want to use regular oil because you will destroy your clutch and that would be a very expensive repair an unnecessarily expensive repair I should say uh, the other oil you can use is uh, Rotella T6 that is if you look at the back of the bottle it is MA and MA-2 oil so if you want to save yourself a few bucks you can do go that route or just buy yourself uh, motorcycle oil or buy the BMW oil it's all it's all good all right I'm gonna make sure we got about a liter left well nope, another half a liter put the dipstick back in and then I'm gonna go ahead and start it and let's let it run for a few seconds all right now I'm gonna just go ahead and pour in my remaining oil and this job this part of the job will be done Looking good. I'll check it again though before I uh, send the bike out. Once I get it running again and everything. Next on the list is to flush out the brakes. So right here is the brake for the the brake reservoir for the front. Uh, make sure, make double sure that you cover all of your paint work on your bike. Because if a drop of that gets on your paint, you're going to be hating life. So, I've got a towel down and I've got a, 
the fender cover. This thing is uh, tilted a little bit and it may it may actually leak. So before that happens, I'm gonna make sure I've got a, a towel just to handy just in case it does. Uh, there's no way to really flatten this one out. It's the guy has the handlebars so this thing is not laying flat. It's actually kind of tilted backwards a little bit. Just be careful taking this off of here because there you could right now I can see there's there's actually some brake fluid on this side. It's from condensation coming around. And if I flip it it might you know splash on onto the paint somewhere. So I'm just gonna be very easy taking that off. Yep, that's fine. I'll set that down somewhere else. And looking down in here, I don't see any of that yellow stuff that I was talking about, but it's fairly dark. It's it's certainly time for change. So I have another one of these. I, this is what I use to uh, suck out the brake fluid. So if this did have a lot of that foam stuff in there, I would take a uh, that yellow looking goop that gets in there. I would take a Q-tip or several Q-tips and work at it until I got all that out of there. But this one's really clean. There's nothing in there other than just a very little bit of brake fluid left. So I got the dot four here. Put enough in there. And now we're going to go down below at the wheel circuits and bleed them from there. Now down here at the wheel circuit I got my, my hose hooked up and my 8 millimeter. I've already cracked it just to make sure that it will operate. And this is very, very traditional. I do like the new bikes that you don't have to do a whole lot to get them bled out. So I'm going to open this up and then I'm going to squeeze the, the brake at the handlebar and then let go. So it's going to go down and then up and down and up. And I'm going to keep repeating this until this gets clear. Uh, I'm going to continually monitor the level in the reservoir so I don't drain it out and then introduce a bunch of air into the system. That would not be cool. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side as well. So after I get the other side done, I will show what it looks like to put it on the GS911 tool and cycle the brakes to make sure that uh, they, they're operating correctly. They're, it runs a test, it runs a pump inside there, and it will flush some new fluid into that system. Do you have to do that every single time? If you don't have a GS911 tool, I would at least do what I'm doing now, which is just flush the brakes. If you have that GS tool, well, why not use it for what it's meant? Um, is it going to hurt anything? No, it's not. It's, it's really not. Uh, do yourself a favor and every once in a while, make sure that the ABS is act actually working. Find a clear spot on the road and jam down on the rear brake, uh, you know, in a safe area. So, you know, try to lock up the rear brake and you'll feel the the pump engage, you'll feel the ABS uh, trying to stop the bike. And that's gonna, it, it may not do the exact same thing, but it is going to at least cycle it. So that way you keep that ABS pump working. You definitely don't want water to get into the system because that's when the ABS is gonna really struggle and, and you'll wind up having some problems. So I'm gonna continue to do this and then I will pick this up again in a minute. So the rear brake reservoir on the bagger is right behind this little panel right here you can remove the seat now for those of you guys that uh, just work on the bikes like I do don't own one of these you may not know how to get the seat off inside of the left side saddle bag right along I'm going to show it on this one because I'm not going to move the camera but if you open up the saddle bag there's a lever that's right here on the opposite side and that will you pull that lever and the seat comes off but anyway brakes. So we're going to pull this off. This is just held in by my little uh, rubber, your little rubber grommets here. And there's your brake reservoir. So open that up. And just suck out what's in there. Very, very typical Brembo style.
And on the rear brakes, you only have one, there's only one bleeder on the caliper. So again, it's gonna be the same procedure as the front. You're gonna open this up, push down the brake, get your arm in there, open it up, push down the brake, close it up, let up the brake. You're going to repeat that until all your fluid gets out uh, clear. So you're, you're pretty confident that it's flushed. Next I'll show the GS911 tool and how that works with this. Alright, I'm going to hook the GS911 tool to the port which is located right here underneath the gas tank. Just pull this, the looks like an OBD2 port up to it. Now the GS911 tool has a round connector and it's got to go to that connector so you need to have an adapter and the adapter can be found on my Amazon page as well as well as a GS tool. So I'm going to plug that in and I'm going to hook it up to my computer on the computer now I know the flickering is pretty bad so I just apologize for that now uh, it's just because the flicker rate of the camera and the monitor apparently are synced up so you're seeing flicker anyways when you plug it in you're gonna see a new connection detected you're gonna go okay and I, I like to perform an auto scan right away so you just turn on the ignition you do need to make sure that the the kill switch is on, you know, in the on position as well as it's in neutral. And it's just going to go ahead and scan this and just tell me if there's any codes that have been thrown. There really shouldn't be, or if they are, there's some, probably something minor like a, a lock mechanism or something. And we'll just scroll through real quick. Oh, that's much worse. Let me just go back to this. Yikes. We're just looking for anything in red. And I know I'm kind of scrolling very quickly. There's just there's a lot of information. No, nope, there's absolutely no codes at all. So now I'm going to go over to the left here into the K bike and go to the K1600 bagger. And I'm going to go to the first thing I'll do is the anti lock braking system and go to the service functions. And then I'm just going to run the function. And you might be able to hear in the background the bike making noise. It's just going to be quiet. Okay. I'm going to activate the pump. And you'll, you should be able to hear it in the background. Now it's just telling me to switch the ignition on and it'll turn tell me to turn it back or turn it off and then back on. And that's that. Now the next thing I'm going to do since I changed the oil is I'm going to go in and reset the service reminder. So that's under special functions and under the service reminder and I'll reset that. I'm just going to use the default settings on it. And that's it. Now I just have to cycle off the key. Well, thanks so much for watching this video on how to change the lubricant in the final drive, the brakes, doing a brake flush, and an oil change. Hope you got something out of it. Uh, again, if you'd like to support me, just check the links right down below. And guys, I will see you on the next one. Thanks a lot.